Hello everyone and welcome to Fourth and Birch. Today we are talking about the scatter method for placing rhinestones on your projects. So first of all, rhinestones are just beautiful and depending on the color and the specific types you get, they can be color changing, they can be iridescent, they can be all the colors of the rainbow, they're beautiful. So let's talk about one of the ways that we can add them to our projects. Hello everybody, this is Jess from Fourth and Birch. Today I'm going to show you how I rhinestone a tumbler. Just a few quick things. You can see I don't go all the way up to the top. Take my cover off here for you. You can see I don't go all the way up to the top. In case anybody wants to drink out of it, you don't really want the stones all the way up to the top. And I go close to the bottom, closer to the bottom than I do the top, but I leave a little bit. This is called the scatter method. This is where you take numerous sizes and just kind of scatter them, almost like a puzzle, just kind of fit them in wherever they will fit. There are a lot of different types of, a lot of different colors, a lot of different types of, of stones. I'm gonna show you here. These are numerous different sizes from from a place on Etsy called Rocking Rhinestones. And there's a lot of different colors that you can choose from. You can get these many, many places. For my tumblers, I typically use, so this is a five millimeter. It's usually the largest I go. This is, these are four millimeters. This is three. And then super tiny ones are two millimeters. And if you want pretty decent coverage, you do need something down to about a two millimeter. It's pretty hard to see. I can use maybe my scissors here, but like right in there, we got a couple of these big ones here, and right in there is a two millimeter. Nothing else would have fit there. Let's see if I can find something. So we have these two big ones here, and then right in there, there's actually three one, two, three of the little two millimeter stones. Big, big, and then three. This is one size up. So this is a two millimeter, this is a three, this is a four, this is a five. But you really do need numerous sizes and, a, and there are just some, some spots that nothing else but a, a two will fit in there. Now, as you can notice, this has a sheen to it. This, when you look for stones, is called AB. This also is AB. You can see the light catching it. It's kind of light changing. Really, it stands for Aurora Borealis. It's So this is basically a red plastic or resin rhinestone. And then they put this sheen on it and call it AB. So this is called, I don't remember specifically the color, but it's, oh, here it is, Trans Royalty Red Gel. So it's red, but then it has the AB over it. 
and there's a lot of these. Let's see what else I got. This is also an AB stone. This is more of a crystal color, so it's a little more of a clear stone, but they put the AB on top. So this is a resin stone. These are resin. This is resin, so basically it means they're plastic. The other alternative, and these are usually measured in millimeters, the actual diameter or the width of the stone. They do make glass rhinestones. Glass rhinestones tend to be a, more expensive than the resin. And they can look very similar. Some can look almost identical. These are a little more rounded. And they're made out of glass instead of plastic. So, a little more expensive, sometimes quite a bit more expensive. They can get very expensive. So it depends on how much your final product you'll want to have cost put into it. But these are stronger. The coloring and whatever they, they put on them or the color of the stone itself in the glass ones, they are much more rugged. Whereas if you use a plastic one like this or like this, over time eventually you will start to see some wear and tear. So you will see some of this kind of plating on these. It could start rubbing off. Now, it is a water or coffee or you know stainless steel, so whatever you want to put in it. They typically don't see a ton of wear and tear. Let's see, it's really hard to see. I'm going to pick up my phone here. So this is a stone. Can you see that? That big one right there, right there. You can see a little bit of it kind of scratching off. And that's because these are resin. So does that matter in the scheme of things? Can you see that? Not very well. If it happens to all of the stones eventually, maybe. Sometimes people will start seeing more wear and tear here because they put it in the cup holder of their car or something like that but in general these can be fairly pricey to make so you just want to have a good handle on how much money you want to put into this so this one that I've already made again is resin the one that I'm going to be making will be with glass now glass also they are equivalent in size to these but they typically, this is called an SS20 size. This is called SS16. This is SS12. Still 12. And what is that one? A 10. Nope, maybe a six. Nope, this one's a six. So anyway, they have conversion charts all over on the internet so you can see what these numbers, what they actually mean. I kind of like how the resin ones actually tell you how many millimeters they are because that makes sense to my brain. These I always, if I haven't um, used the glass ones in a while or don't have some right in front of me to see that these 20s are pretty close in size to the five millimeters. If you don't have this, um, just just google it online it'll be easy and sometimes wherever you're purchasing these from they will um they will give you the the conversion basically you know of what size this is and what it's equivalent to in millimeters these also just fyi also come from the same place that the other ones did from the rocking rhinestones which i purchased from etsy
another kind that I don't use too often. Um, I personally don't like the look of them on tumblers, especially like a scatter method. Um, and I'm not even sure what they're called. Uh, pearls, perhaps? But they're, these are, they're also the A, B. I mean, they don't have to be, but the ones I have here are. And they're more uh, domed, like a half a pearl. And this is mixed sizes. This is two millimeters to eight millimeters. I got these on Amazon. And some people certainly do use these. It sounds maybe silly, but I I kind of think it looks almost wart like warty when these are all. I'm not sure. I think just because they're rounded, domed, I don't I don't really care for them on tumblers. But you would put them on the same way. Another thing when you get any sort of stones, make sure they are not hot fix. We don't want the iron on ones. These are more. We just want the plain back or the foil back. That gives uh, the foil, you know, the foil is just the, the color kind of underneath, but you do not want hot fix. All right. There are numerous supplies that you can use when you are making these. This is something that I tend to use. These come out. So if I'm trying to keep everything a little kind of together and whatnot, I put my stones, so I put my different size stones here. So if I'm doing something where I have four different size stones, what I typically do is small, medium, large, and um, the super, super tiny ones, I usually put them in with my extra large because obviously those, you can easily tell the difference. So, you know, I go up in size, but then mix my very biggest, my very littlest. Or, you know, you might just be doing it with three colors, but or three sizes. I tend to do it with four. These, this is another way you could do it. The nice thing about this is when you put your beads on here, Shake some out. You can shake this a bit back and forth. And a lot of the beads will end up being face up. So when you so it'll make it much easier to pick them up and put them on your cup. So this has these lines in it. Another thing you can do is when you have your tool, we'll talk about this later, but instead of shaking it, what you can do is just kind of that kind of makes them jump around something hard. And then you have more that are facing up. So the other way you can do this is something like this or some sort of Tupperware tray. So I have my two millimeters, my three, my four, and my five. This is my uh, this is this is my little pack for the ones that just didn't turn out. They were um, maybe they didn't have the AB shine on them. Let's see if I can get one out of here. This one they sent me in my packet, and it was all silver, 
and that's not the color that I bought. It's actually, this is from when I was making this cup here. So they sent me a silver one. I didn't want it, so I put it in my little garbage pile. These are called AB Violet Purple, and they are from, who? it's from Etsy. It's called Bling That, or Bling That and That, I believe. But so this I can pick up, say, my 5mm. They're in there. 4, 3, 2. So... And some people just take these and mix them all up and spread them out on a tray and they will just pick the sizes that they want. I personally like to keep them separated so I can put them back in the bag when I'm done. But all right, give me a second here to clean up and we'll talk about some more tools. So here's what we're going to use for a few more supplies. So any stainless steel tumbler, tumbler will do. Uh, people do also rhinestone uh, plastic and different things like that. I personally like stainless steel because I don't like my drinks and anything else. I like my hot stuff kept hot and my cold stuff kept cold. So I have something like this. I personally get mine from Maker Flow. All right. This is the the grabber or the picker. This I just got on Amazon. There are also other brands. I think Kitana is one of them. It's apparently very good. I haven't had any issues with these. So, um, and I've purchased them once and it came in a pack of four and I'm still on the pack of four. So I haven't even needed to uh, purchase anything else. But on one end is a wax tip which you can purchase more of these so if this gets dull or squished or if you leave it in a hot car and it melts you just screw that in and on this side is just a metal the pusher you can pick up tiny little beads with this sometimes but this is a little more for once you put the 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 rhinestone on your cup you can use this to kind of push it around more where you want it but the nice thing about this is it's wax so you trying to get one that's not upside down you just tap I'm going to put this on. You just tap it right on top and look, it picks it right up. And when you have your glue on here, you just tap it on there and it sticks to the glue. And when it's on there, if it's again, if you want to slide it around a little somewhere else, you use this to push it around. You never want to use this, your wax tip, to push them around. One, because it can, it can break. Uh, my kids do these too and they've broken several tips just because they're a little rough with them. But also you don't want to get any glue on this. You want it to stay nice and waxy so it's sticky enough to pick these up one at a time, but not too sticky that you can't get the, the rhinestone off when you want it to. Some people use a tweezers also. I'm not as big of a fan of that. Every time I tend to pick it up, uh, the rhinestone goes flying half the time because it's round, so I, I don't know. It's hard for me to pick that up. All right. Next, we need some sort of adhesive to put the rhinestones on the cup. These are the two most popular, I think, by far. There's plenty out there. Uh, if you have something that you like and it works for you, great. Uh, my favorite is this Super Tight Fusion Tech Adhesive. This, I purchased at Hobby Lobby for $3.99, so, you know, for this huge bottle. So not bad. Sometimes it's a little hard to find. It's not like in the normal glue area. Um, I think you can get it online as well, but typically it's more expensive online. Um, believe it or not, Hobby Lobby is one of the cheapest places I found it. I think you can get it at Joanne too, but I, I could be wrong. Um, I like this. It's white, but it dries clear. So you can see 
when you put it on your cup, the part that's still white, still active, still liquid, um, and not cured yet. Liquid Fusion, a lot of people swear by this. I've only tried it once or twice. Um, so this has the consistency of Elmer's glue to me, and I like that. Uh, and I can see when I, when I smear an area on here where I'm going to get ready to work and put down stones, I like to see where that area is exactly. This is clear, has a tiny bit of a yellow tint to it, but it dries clear. And I don't like it as much. It, um, it's a little more liquidy. So when I try to squeeze it out of my bottle, uh, more comes out than I planned. Now, you know, maybe that's just because I'm used to using this. But also, it's hard to see, for me, when I smear a little bit out, what part is actually still wet and kind of where my working area is, especially in lower light. You know, if you're doing this, just doing a Netflix binge or something like that, you might not have a ton of lights on above you. Um, so again, they're, they're both, um, when they dry, they're basically, um, I'm going to call them waterproof. Um, it, you know, this isn't a cup that I'm going to scrub with. Uh, you definitely can't put it in the dishwasher. Um, I definitely wouldn't soak it, but you really don't need to. I mean, I've gotten it wet. I've used a little bit of a scrub brush, you know, if like, I don't know, just whatever, some food or something got on it from being on the counter next to it. Um, but, I, I mean, really, what do you need to do to cups besides just scrub the inside of them? So, um, but otherwise, they're both very similar in their properties and how they hold the stones on and their quality. So it's personal preference. This is the one I go for. Now, this is going to give you way too big of a blob. So I always get these. You can get them at most craft stores or pretty cheap online, like at Amazon or Etsy. And it basically just has kind of a needle nose. So you can get super tiny amounts out. And when I do some tumblers, I actually will take little dots like this everywhere I'm going to put a tumbler. Um, but for my scatter method, I don't. For my scatter method, I will show you. I just kind of, uh, I don't know, paint on a little area. Something, too, that I personally like to do. Um, so this comes with this. I don't leave it on while I'm doing my cup. So here's what I do. I put this on first. Like that. This is supposed to go around here just so this doesn't get lost. But uh, it kind of flops around a lot when you're trying to... So if you had this on here and then you take this off. This kind of flops around a lot and I don't like it getting into my glue. So anyway, so this is what I do. So I put that part on first and then I take this loop and I go over the top. And then I put it down. So what that does, you can see that, when I take this off ready to work, I just pull this loop down and this all stays out of my way. So I can do my cup, all this is out of my way. Um, if I have to, I don't know, run to the bathroom or you know, take care of the kids or something like that for a short amount of time, I will pull this, wipe this off with, uh, with either my finger, pull any glue off the tip of it, but then put this on and you're fine. But I can sit for you know hours with this off and just put my glue on, put stones on, put my glue on, put stones on. And, you know, if it gets a little crusty here with glue, I will definitely, like, pull that little crust off. But I've otherwise never had a problem with it clogging. These are pretty cheap that if you do ever have this clog, uh, it's not the end of the world. Just fill another bottle or replace the top. So, throw that back on for now. And another thing that I like to do is you want your glue at the bottom, or I guess the top. <laughs> you want it up here closer to the nozzle. You don't want it like this. When it's storing, you can do that. But when you're actually doing your cup, you every time you pick this up and this is off, 
you want to be able to pick it up, smear a little glue where you want it, put it down, do your stones. When you want to pick this back up, you don't want to be shaking it to try to get the glue all the way down at the bottom. So um, if you have a little something, a little cup or something like that to just kind of stick it in, you will get glue. There will be a little bit of glue coming out of the bottom of here, so whatever you do, end up sticking this in. I don't have anything here, but you know you could do like that, and then pick it up, put your glue on, put it back down, and then gravity will keep the glue at the bottom. So every time you want to put this on, it'll be ready to go. Again, know that whatever is on the bottom, though, so like here, my table would get all full of glue, so I would put something down, or again, just get something else for it. Hey, hello everybody I just wanted to pop in here to say somebody had recommended to me a different type of bottle for the glue instead of oops rhinestone stick into everything all right uh, so this is what I typically use is something like this like I had just discussed before and somebody else brought something up which is oops, stick around which is this this I found in Hobby Lobby in the tie-dye section. So by the, kind of by the blank shirts, uh, it was an aisle or two over from that, at least at mine. And again, just by the tie-dye stuff. If you ask for that, it'll be by the different uh, dyes and things. And this is typically a bottle that you put the dye in. I, I don't tie dye, so I don't know the terminology. I apologize. But you put the dye in, and when you tie the, the shirt, uh, this is what you apply the dye with. So what these are typically meant for, I'm just going to take this off altogether. This is typically meant, this is completely sealed at the end, and um, you're meant to cut it with a scissors. However, if you do that you have too big of a hole typically for what we want to do on our tumblers so i would not recommend cutting the tip off instead now it was not the easiest thing in the world because the end of this was pretty sealed it was pretty thick plastic um but i tried both with a safety pin and ultimately what worked the best was a tack just a little thumb tack that once you get it in there now this one I've already done so it's gonna make it like easy peasy but I put a hole in there with my tack and now now this gives still a little bit actually more thicker of a line than this guy but there have been people saying that they do get clogs with this one and again you can either replace the top um, I personally haven't had issues with clogging but um, th this is thinner so it would make sense that it would be it would happen more readily with this um, so anyway this line from this tie-dye guy a little thicker so you do still have to be a little careful with it we can't just squeeze and go all out and expect it to um, to not be too much but as an alternative to this we can use this and actually I have switched to this to give it a try I've been using it for a little while and um, I actually I like it a lot I haven't had any issues with this either and it's just as easy I take this all the way off because um, when I'm putting glue on my project this is already poking at whatever on my cup so I typically just take this off when I'm working and then I have my cup here like we talked about I just put that in there and let that sit there until I need it again take it out put this on my cup and put it back in so, alternative, if you so wish, to do this. We're going to prep our cup just a little bit. I like to sand my cups with some sandpaper. 
what I'm using here is just some P1000. Now, remember, I didn't go all the way up to the top on this. I don't want the top of this to be all scuffed up with sandpaper. So I'm going to figure out, I'm going to basically kind of draw a line where I can sand up to. And that also gives me a visual of when I'm putting my stones on. You know, these aren't perfect. They're never going to be perfect if you do a scatter method. Some people do come and they put the same size stone and they go all the way around. Um, and that's certainly something you can do. I, I scatter all the way up to the top though. So it's all over the place. So this is what it looks like if you have a straight top with all one stone, same size, all along the top of your cup. It makes it a little difficult to fill in immediately underneath it because after this you basically want to start scattering if that's your goal is to have the scatter. So you can either choose straight line at the top and any size stone. I could have chosen my little two millimeter stone if I wanted to, but I chose my four, my larger one to go across the top. So that's what it looks like versus this one. you can do whichever one you want to but I did have a scratched line in here and my my stones went a little bit above that because I don't want to see my scratched line coming through uh -huh. either so one of the ways you can do that is take something this is just a, a candle cover but something that's about the the width of where you want that line and this is the inside of my cup and you can take, um, I don't have one with me, but the, what works really well is a silver Sharpie because it doesn't actually show up that, um, it shows up well enough. You still need to put stones over it or it will show up on the top, but um, it's otherwise a really, a really good color. But you take something either sharp or your Sharpie and you put this on here and you scratch. And I'm noticing that this is actually a little thicker than what I want it to be. Let's see, what else do I have here that I could use? I am going to look for something a little thinner than this, and I will be right back. All right, I'm back. So although this was the height that I kind of wanted my line, the scissors that I ended up grabbing today, it adds um, more height. So it's actually making it from the bottom to the, the scratcher here, it's gonna be too high. So I just have a little pad, I'll put this on here. And the most important part is you do not want this to wiggle. You want a very nice straight line. So I don't want it hanging off very far this way. I want most of my tool, whatever I'm using, on here so it's much less likely to tip. Then I'm going to hold it very tightly and then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to spin it in a circle and scratch it into my second time and I don't know if that's easy to see there you go you can see where that's scratched 
and that's going to be my line. So I'm going to use sandpaper from that line up. I am not going to do it in that little, I'd say maybe about a, it's about a quarter of an inch. I'm not going to do it above that part. Trying to get the light to shine on it a little better for you. There you can see a little bit. Um, if it's helpful, you can put a piece of tape above the top now that you know where that perfect line is. Although you have to be careful with tape. If you get a little too crazy with your sandpaper, you can um, kind of roll up the tape and end up sanding where you didn't want to sand anyway. So it's just something that I just eyeball. Take a small piece of this first. And I'm just going to go right along this. This line here. All right, I've made it all the way around. I'm gonna do one more trek around with my small one here. Just underneath it. It really is better to do um, circular motions or at least crisscrossing. You really sand this and give it on a very, I don't know if microscopic level, but a small level. We're basically making this a much better surface for our glue to stick to. It's going to adhere a whole lot better. All right, so now I've done this. I did it at the line. I did another strip just below it. And now I can go a little crazier with my bigger one because now I know I'm not going to accidentally get above that line. So. And like I said, I don't go all the way to the bottom, but I get close. I am not going to sand my actual bottom. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to get way, way, way to the bottom. But I'm going to kind of go pretty close up to this, this line here before it starts curving down. I definitely don't want to put any of my stones on this after it starts curving that tiny bit. I want it above that where it's still flat. pretty well sanded this is definitely something if you can see how dirty my fingers are you want to wash this so we're gonna go wash this with 
Dawn dish soap and dry it really well. And then we'll be ready to start gluing. Okay, let's get into the meat and potatoes of actually getting some rhinestones on our cup. We've talked about all the previous things, all the supplies we need, all the things to get ready, and now we're ready. Let's put the glue on the cup. So I'm starting here with my more long nose, my kind of needle nose uh, glue applicator. Later in the video, I'll switch to the other one, the tie-dye. So we're going to start here. I know it's difficult to see on the video, but I can, I'm visualizing my scratched line. So I'm putting my glue about up to the line, maybe a, just a tiny bit above, like a, maybe a millimeter, maybe. And I'm going to almost kind of scratch paint this on because I want a nice thin layer with decent coverage, but again, thin. And I'll show you in just a minute why it's important to keep it fairly thin. But first, let's just start placing the stones. So I'm picking them up in a fairly random order, just with my wax picker. And just kind of where you think it looks good. You want to butt them up to each other as close as possible. You don't want much of the cup showing through underneath. And let's watch this next one to see why it's important to use the metal part on the other side, the pusher. So I flip this over. And I want to just tap that down. I'm going to slide it a little bit. It's kind of moving around on me. And when it's where I want it, I'm going to give it a quick tap right on the top into the glue. It kind of pushes it down and it adheres it more. Here's another good way to use that. So I dropped this stone in that little opening, but it's actually a little big and it's not laying flat. I know it's difficult to see, but it's not laying flat. So I took my pusher and it kind of pushed the other two around it. A little out to the sides which is okay didn't expose too much of the cup underneath but it laid that that smaller stone flat you need to make very sure sure that your stones are flat or there's not going to be a good bond with the glue and it's difficult because as you saw as I moved that little one the two around it the one to the left the one to the right moved a little bit and that happens and and the more that you start getting more of the rhinestones on here if you're not careful you can push one into the one next to it and that pushes into the one next to that and next to that and it's kind of this cascade effect and if you're not paying attention a stone maybe three or four stones away from the one you're working on gets kind of undermined like pushed up and it's no longer flat so if it's still in that wet glue area that hasn't dried yet they're all at risk for kind of popping up and they don't typically pop up on their own, but if you're doing some pushing and moving, you can make them pop up elsewhere. So let's just quick break for a second. Let me show you a little section that I did that I put too much glue and it's kind of squishing up between the stones. So let's freeze it here and just peek at this. So this is definitely going to keep your stones in place, <laughs> but it's not going to be very visually attractive when the cup is done. Um, the Any glue that's on top of the stone takes away from that, the brilliance, the sparkle, the way the light comes off of it. So everywhere that there's glue is not going to be as clear and beautiful. And also, although the glue technically dries clear, there is a bit of fogginess to it. So you are going to be able to see that. And we really want the stones themselves, the, the sparkle, the reflection of light, we want that to be what draws our eye to this cup. So be very cautious about adding too much glue. All right, let's get back to putting the stones on. So my glue's taking a little bit to get started here, coming out. There we go. So I'm going to kind of dot it around. Like I said, sometimes kind of scratch it around just to thin out the layer. And you don't want to put too much of a patch of glue because by the time you get around to some of it, it's going to have already started to dry. And you don't want to put your stones down. So with this type of glue that starts white and dries clear, if you get to a section that's almost clear, 
that means it's almost dry and I would not put a stone on top of that. I would actually reapply a little bit of glue. There's not going to be a great bond if most of it has dried. So do small patches. It seems fairly tedious. Really this whole cup is pretty tedious depending on how big of a cup you do. Obviously it depends on how long it takes. But if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you kind of know a bit of the the time commitment that this takes. Uh, but it, it seems when you're putting just such tiny patches on at once, you're like, oh my gosh, am I ever going to get done with this? But I promise you will, and you're going to love it. And you're going to be so happy that you put the time into it and so proud of it, actually. You will get a lot of compliments and comments on this cup. And when you say, yeah, I made it myself with all the little stones, almost every time they say, oh my gosh, you put every single one of those stones on separately. Yes, I did. And it's, it's a pretty cool thing to, to have people be in awe of that. All right, watch this big stone that I'm putting down here. I think I need to tap it down, but it is, oops, it's a slippery little sucker. So when you're tapping it, make sure to tap it from the top uh, to kind of push it down to try to adhere it and don't push too hard or it's going to start sliding all over the place like a hockey puck. But it is usually a good idea to give a bit of a tap just to make sure that the entire flat back comes in contact with that glue. Now, look at that little spot there. I'm going to add a tiny more glue because it's starting to dry a little bit. You can see it's somewhat white, but mostly clear. So I'm going to add just a tiny drip of glue and I'm going to find a stone that will fit there. Obviously it can't be a big one. I don't want to push everything around. So this is where you just start getting kind of good eventually at eyeballing. So let's see, do you think that one will fit there? Yep. That one looks good. Oops. Get back there. Slippery little guy. There we go. And the more you do this, the more comfortable you get kind of estimating a size, like what size stone should I put here to take up the most amount possible room, but not push everything else around it. And that's kind of the skill that you develop as you do this more. And there we go. We're done with our first little section. So in a little bit here, I'm going to speed this up so you can still watch the process a bit, but it, it's not taking as much of your time. But I will just mention that, so this little strip that I have is, I don't know, two, three, four stones tall. Um, that's about what I do. And I end up going all the way around the rim first. So I, I finish my rim because right now, I'm kind of in a groove and I can see my scratch line and I'm kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm estimating how far from the top that I want everything and what I want it to look like. And I don't want to come back to this later. I want this part done first and then it's much easier to start building lower. So build from the rim down. And I think people, their eye is more drawn to the rim first versus the bottom or kind of the butt of the cup that touches the table when you set it down. So I like to spend a little more time on this part. I don't want any of my glue, if I can help it, pushing above that top layer of stone. That'll show up on your cup. It'll look kind of shiny. It's going to look different than the rest of your stainless steel, which is kind of dull. So spend a little time on it, go all the way around with, again, a width of a few stones, or I guess the height of a few stones. And once you get all the way around, then you can start working down. So, all right, I'm going to speed this part up for you guys. All right, so I've made it all the way around my little collar across the top. Back that up a little for you. And there we go. 
that is kind of the first step. You can see a little bit of my glue still white there. It's still a little wet. Most of it is pretty clear already though, so most of it's dry. And now that this part is done, we can start working towards the bottom of the cup, building off of this. I'm just gonna pop in here quickly to show you what happens after you've been using your glue tip for a while. You're pushing it down, you're scraping it, you're scratching it, and it gets this on the end of it. So when that happens, just pull it off. I like to call it my glue booger. And if you pull it straight out, it kind of clears the tip of that, of any glue that might be attempting to clog it. So another little tip, if you're using a plastic container such as this, and not one that's meant for beads or stones, uh, it's hard sometimes to have them all like that, where they're face up, to make them easy to pick because this doesn't have those nice little lines like some of those trays did. But if you kind of shake your tray like this and then tip it towards you or in one direction, tap it gently, a lot of those smaller stones, you see those? Now they're all perfectly face up for you. So you do that until you use those up and then just do it again. The area with the largest stones is kind of full, so it doesn't do it as well as the smaller stones, but you can either use your finger and kind of just flick them up once it's laying flat. Sometimes that at least gives you some options to pick up. And then sometimes just after you've been picking stones for a while and you've picked all the right-sided ones up, and you're left with a lot that are not, sometimes you can just kind of tap your container or shake it around or just do some things to get some of them to flip around for you. Also, we talked about having kind of a, a garbage area of the ones that just don't look right. This is one, for instance, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but it almost looks scratched. And more likely it's the foil bottom underneath that scratched, not the glass itself. These stones do not have that Aurora Borealis AB coating on them like a lot of resin ones do, but what helps give them their, their color is a foil bottom. And this one I think you can see a little better. Well, if I can hold it still long enough for you. But you can see there is an issue with the foil on the bottom. There you go, you can kind of see a little bit. It just looks like a little de uh, defect. No huge deal, but as I was picking stones, I saw that and I was like, eh, that doesn't look like the rest of them. It's not gonna look very uniform. And something like that potentially can stick out kind of like a sore thumb on your cup. So there, that's much easier to see that way. It just doesn't have the color that you would expect all the way through. And I don't want that adhered to my cup for the rest of its life. So that one will go in the garbage. All right, so remember we had the, the collar, I guess, or the, the rim done. I'm gonna um, put my glue, my little cover there, so it stays out of my way. And we are going to start building downwards. And again, we're going to do very small sections again. I have a spot here that probably only will fit a tiny stone. But I'm going to paint on or scratch on some of that glue. And then start adding stones just like we did before.
All right, so just another look at this. This is how far I've gotten. I put another, I guess, row all the way around. That tends to be how I work. You can really work this however you want to, but for me, it works best to do that thin collar along the top all the way around. And then I add rows of about the same height or width and keep working around and around and around. This is just in the sunlight, so you can kind of see how it picks up some of the light. And we just keep on going. All right, so just another quick pause break to see how far we are and looking at it in the sunlight. And now I'm going to make the switch to the tie-dye bottle instead of that needle nose bottle to give it to see um, how I like this one. So it took me a while but I finally made a hole in the top of that with the tack. Not easy to do but I somehow did it without maiming myself. That was great. The first bottle I cut the top off with the scissors like I thought would be fine. I cut it off what I thought was a tiny little hole and it was not way too much came out at once so that's why I tried the tack and it was a lot better so again do not cut that off with the scissors too thick so all right here's the one that we did with the tack and it actually does have a pretty thin line you can see the ones to the left there that was the cut off with the scissors too thick too much at once so let's see how it goes with the tack top tie-dye bottle So it is still coming out thicker than the needle nose. As you can see here, it's and it's not as easy to scrape all along as the metal needle nose was. It doesn't make it as thin of a layer. So if you're aware of that, when you place your stones, uh, you want to try to not have to push them around on the cup as much uh, because that'll easily kind of plow up some of that glue and make it squeeze or squish between your stones but i actually don't mind it um through the making of this cup i actually did end up having a few clogs that it took a bit to clear with the needle nose and uh, that had not happened in previous cups of mine Maybe this one's just getting old, I'm not sure. So going to this tie-dye bottle actually isn't bad. And I ended up finishing the rest of this cup with that one. So, um, I don't know, I feel like kind of six and a half dozen, but probably in the future, if they're easy enough to find in the store and or uh, buy online, I'd probably go with the tie-dye bottle again, probably. All right, let's fast forward quite a ways. And I made it, let's say maybe three quarters of the way down the cup. And then that is about the time where I make a little collar ring around the bottom of the cup. This is for similar reasons as the top. I like to focus on what I'm doing on the bottom and make sure it looks fairly good together all the way around. And then I will start bringing the two basically the, the the top and the bottom together kind of filling in filling in that area 
as you can see in the bottom here, I have a little bit of glue right there. I will scrape that off either later with a toothbrush, you could do it with your finger. You can do your metal tool, although you have to be really careful you don't scratch your stainless steel because that is not something you can fix. But all right, so we're looking at this row here that's not done. I have my bottom and it's dry. And I'm going to do little sections about that much. I'm going to actually go all the way from the, the top to the bottom now and fill in sections until we make it all the way around. All right, the ends are starting to meet. This can actually be probably the hardest part of the cup as far as kind of maneuvering the stones and finding them where you want them and, and putting them where they fit, yet not show too much of the stainless steel cup on the way uh, in between. But at this point, you have a lot of practice under your belt. You've done most of this cup, so you have some skill. <laughs> and you do the best you can you want to try to use some big stones in there like this it's easy when you have narrow passages to fill it's easy to get in the habit of using a ton of tiny stones because your mind is telling you that's all that's going to fit but you don't want to do that uh, that would be fairly noticeable if you had a patch all along the bottom of fairly tiny stones so do what you need to do if you need to take one out and move it and try another one. Trying to make a little spot there. Not sure if a little one's going to fit, but I'm going to give it a try with a little two millimeter. And you'll actually see it kind of pushes some of the other ones around it out of the way, which is okay. I made 100% sure that when I did move those that there were not any other stones that got popped up. So all of my stones are still very flat against my cup, making good contact with the glue. So I'm happy with that. And then you just keep on keeping on with a little trial and error and putting those puzzle pieces together. And finding a home for every single one of them. At this point, I tend to do even smaller little patches of glue because I, I work a little more slowly at this point. Some stones that you're putting in don't fit, and like I said, you have to either pull them up or push them around and do a little more trial and error than what you have been used to. Yep, that one was too big. Let's try it. Nope, that one not either. Let's try... like actually a really big one might go there yeah that looks pretty good but yeah don't be too overzealous with your size patches of glue or it's going to be drying out on you fairly quickly And there you go. This is how you end up meeting your top up with your bottom. And you just keep doing this all the way around. And you're so close to being done. Although I'll be completely honest, this final stretch, it feels like it takes like 20 times longer than what you already have accomplished on this cup, just because you're so close to being done. Hey everyone, so it is the long awaited Look how long it's been. I have this much left. It's very, very, very exciting. So. I'm 
try to zoom in here. It's very difficult for me to show this to the camera, yet still be able to see it myself. So when you get close to the end end, what you want to do is think about maybe using a few more larger stones because as you get smaller and smaller it's just kind of tendency to need smaller and smaller stones so we don't want this to look like uh, an area that sticks out that has mostly small stones so do what you can keep that in mind to try to keep it the same scatter method that you have everywhere else but sometimes it just gets downright tricky so we're gonna go a little bit at a time with the glue and we'll see where it takes us been a little big there so I'm gonna scooch that one out of the way add a little more glue and go the next size down yep I like that one better maybe we'll move that guy or some of that glue off of there I don't know where do we want this guy yep maybe he's got to go there I'll give that a try. So I'm going to leave that big one there as long as I can get a super tiny one next to it. And I can... Push that down, we'll leave him there, push him down, and then we'll work on this over here. See, I'm already using a few small ones in some of these holes. And then I keep dropping my little one. Pull this guy out, stick that small one in, and I might have to put another small one there. Make sure all of them are laying flat.
We're getting a lot of small ones around here. I'm gonna shoot for a place to put a big one. <laughs> pushing a lot of stuff around in here so I'm making sure I'm tapping it all down making sure nothing popped up while I was doing that I think one or two small ones and that might be it for this guy to use a big one in here, but I don't know that he's going to work. I'm going to have to slide a few things around and see. Actually, it might work there. Oh my goodness. Last one, potentially. Alright. So, because this is my last area, I do have a little bit of bigger gaps than I than I wanted. That's the part there that I just finished. Right here. So, I'm going to just move these around a little bit. I know they, some of them fit together a little tighter than that. Oh shoot, this guy popped up. What are we gonna do with him? That guy doesn't have a home. All right, that's why everything fit better. Yeah, again, I might need to take this big guy out. Oh, no, he doesn't want to. <laughs> and I'm popping stuff up around it. Holy cow. All right, push a couple of these guys down. Down, down. You know, I mean, we tried our best with trying a larger one. We might just need to do some smaller ones. Give it a try, see how it goes. This 
one might be too big. All right, let's give that a try. So I do have a decent amount of small ones all together right here. Kind of between my fingers here. And when this dries clear, you're really not gonna be able to tell that much. I have plenty of big ones around it. I am gonna, like I said, just try to move them around a little bit, make sure everybody it's flat. Yeah. Right now, to me, I think it sticks out because my glue is still white, so I can see it more. But I think we are done. And I kind of looked through the rest, and I don't see any. I kind of look through this way, make sure I don't see any that look like they're popping up, that they're taller or kind of different shaped than any of the others. And I've been doing that as I go along. I don't, I haven't seen any. Well, there was one. I saw one that was, it was a medium sized one somewhere. It had kind of popped up. So it was, instead of being flat, it was partially like this and everything else around it was dry. Um, it was actually hard to get that little guy out um, because even though he was kind of tilted, he was still in there pretty good. And as I'm looking through this, I don't know if it's something you can see on the camera. So there's this big one right here. And for some reason, I wonder if it's the foil on the back, it does not have, so watch that guy right there, the big one. It doesn't have the same color tint as what's around it. It's more of like a pastel pink. I don't think that anybody would notice that, but I do, I did now. And if I don't fix it, it's gonna be like that forever in my brain. So unfortunately, this is a part that's already been stuck down. So I don't care if I scratch this one. I don't want to scratch any of the ones around it. This one's going to go in my little garbage pile. It's not super cured. I was probably at this section maybe six hours ago maybe so and I don't even know if it's really that noticeable but this one is a lot more pastel looking to me so this one's gonna go in the garbage I'm going to replace it with the same size so I don't have to worry about not having space. But that's, that's the thing you're kind of looking for in your once over at the end is stuff like that. So we definitely want to make sure that this guy is pushed down because now he has a little bit of jagged glue underneath him. We could have scraped it off, but there wasn't much down there. But I want to make sure that he touches all of that fresh glue that I put down. So I'm looking at the rest and just making sure that I don't see anything like that. Anything that's sticking out that I missed the first time around. And I don't. All right, so four cups to fully cure. And by cure, I basically mean 
let the glue dry as much as it needs to. So if I'm going to sell this, I personally usually wait about seven days to be safe. I've heard people say three to five, I've heard people say five to seven, and I wanna be absolutely sure, especially if this is something I'm going to ship. I mean, I tell my, my customers that this is not something to put in extreme cold or extreme warm weather. So for instance, don't leave it out in your car in winter in Wisconsin or in summer in Wisconsin, <laughs> but uh, depending on your state's extremes, um, either of those as well. So, uh, but things get really hot when you ship them. So I definitely wanna make sure that these are on here and the glue is as hard as it's ever gonna be. After that seven days, you can take, I usually take a soft bristled toothbrush and just moisten it a little bit. And I just go through and I scrub a little bit, not very hard. But what it basically does is every time you picked up a gem with this, a little bit of wax probably transferred to that stone. So there's probably just a tiny bit of wax on the top of all of these. Now, me obviously handling it, moving my hands around, probably has wiped off quite a bit. But when somebody opens this for the first time or sees it on the shelf at a show to see if they want to buy it, I would like this to look as sparkly and blingy as humanly possible. So I do that with a soft toothbrush. Again, I wait until it's totally cured. I do that with just some water. Uh, I know that wax and water aren't really friends, but it's, it's really just... Um, helping with the debris and shine it up a little bit. It's really the toothbrush, the, the action that's taking the wax off, not the water itself. But I would not use any other sort of cleaner or solvent or anything like that. Uh, these are, when you are done with them, they're considered water resistant. So I personally, yes, I've dripped water down the side. I've dripped coffee down the side and I just rinse it under the sink. Um, you could use, again, like a soft toothbrush or a soft brush of some sort if you needed to. Um, but really, whether, whether you're using it for water or coffee or anything, I mean, really you scrub the inside, but you don't really, there's not much need for the outside. So definitely don't soak them. They're definitely not safe for the dishwasher. Uh, they're not safe for the microwave, but I mean, the fact that they're stainless steel alone would make that incompatible. But so I say hand wash only, gentle washing on the outside only if necessary. And I'm not totally done with this. For my personal preference, I like to make the bottom look nicer. Uh, you usually do not want to remove this sticker that's on here unless you know what is under it. So from my company, I could. Um, this is, it's sealed underneath this, but it's actually like a little black rubber cork almost sealing this because it's a double walled stainless steel tumbler. So there's always a hole somewhere here. Some are permanently covered. So this one is permanently with that little rubber stopper or cork. And then they put the sticker over it for extra protection. But I have had some where I thought, well, this is pretty ugly or it's really off center or whatever. And I peel it off and there's the hole and now it's not vacuum sealed anymore and you basically just ruined your keeping hot hot and keeping cold cold. So I recommend always leaving this on, don't mess with it. If you don't like what it looks like, fix it, add to it. So this is oftentimes where people put their company logo or their name. Um, I do that on some things, I, I typically don't. What my preference is for these types of tumblers, and this is my my resin one that I had used earlier in the video. I actually fill this with epoxy and a somewhat matching glitter. So for instance, something like this guy, um, maybe, maybe a glitter like this. It's kind of purple, kind of green. It doesn't have to be perfect. Some you're gonna find that are spot on perfect 
and some just aren't. But this one actually I'm, I've been pretty happy with. So what I would do is fill, really you just need, uh, I never mix less than five cc's of epoxy resin in one cup. If, I'm, if I try to measure less than that, I feel like there's too much of a chance of my ratios being off. So five is the minimum. So you don't need five for this, but you're not really wasting that much. So two and a half of A, two and a half of B for the tumbler epoxy that I use. Mix it in a medicine cup. You add a decent amount of your glitter and you fill this up. And you wanna be very, 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 very careful that that you do not create a meniscus on here. You don't want a, this domed whatsoever. You want this whole thing to be able to sit flat on your table and not wiggle. So it's hard to see these, but just know, and you'll be able to see when you get down and eyeball this from the side when you're filling it with the epoxy, uh, how much is enough or too much. So. And then, depending on if it's fast set or not, you let your epoxy cure for the amount of time that it needs to sit and cure. And that's about it. Um, for this guy that I'm just starting to do, I would probably use this is both, it's a, it's a chunky mix. So it's chunky on this side, but uh, it's been sitting on my shelf like this. So all the fine stuff went to the back. So you just do the best you can. And in all in actuality, if you don't have anything, it doesn't have to match. You could take something like this, which I showed my honeycomb technique, and you could just put navy or just purple or black. You could fill this in instead of glitter, you could use mica powder or pigment, anything that you want to, or do nothing at all. Again, this is fine if it stays like this forever. I just like to jazz it up a little bit. So, and if you have any questions at all for me, please put them in the comments. If you're looking for another method besides the scatter method, there's numerous ones. Usually the only two that I do are scatter or honeycomb. This is a much bigger stone than I have ever used on anything, which is why I did it on this, this little passport. This is where I keep the documents for uh, for my business and whatnot. So uh, I thought, why not? You could bling anything, right? But it was much easier to show a tutorial and honeycomb with a larger stone. Uh, but there are numerous other ways that you can do. You can uh, search them up on the internet. These are the two that I like best. So thank you so much for watching. I know it's been a long tutorial, but there's a lot to talk about with these tumblers. And once you get the hang of it, you know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to change up. And then pretty soon you find yourself searching Etsy or online and you just can't stop buying rhinestones. I don't have enough cups probably that I could cover with all these, but I still needed them. <laughs> so take care, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.